link between eating disorders, such as bulimia, anorexia, nervosa, and autoimmune conditions. There's some really good research that was just published uh, earlier this year that showed a surprising connection between autoimmune conditions and people with eating disorders. Uh, I'll put the citation down there below. The reason I say it's surprising is most eating disorders have never been viewed as a possibly immunological disease. They've been strictly viewed as a psychiatric or an emotional disease. However, what this research has found, and it's very fascinating, is that autoimmune diseases seem to possibly cause eating disorders and certainly contribute to the maintenance of these eating disorders. So why would that happen? What kind of autoimmune disorders are we talking about? Well, there is type 1 diabetes, there's Crohn's disease was certainly found, but there's other autoimmune disorders that they found that were associated with it just in general. One of the reasons this is, is when you have an autoimmune condition, your immune system is dysregulated. There's no longer balance. And once you have dysregulation, you lose what's called self-tolerance, which means normally your immune system, your T cells and your B cells, they don't attack healthy tissue. But when you have an autoimmune condition, that's exactly what they do. And frankly, they can attack anything. What's probably going on in this association between eating disorders and autoimmune conditions is we're probably getting neurological tissue attack um, that is altering how the brain fires and alters body perception and probably also leads to what we call body dysmorphic disorder. There's a whole bunch of research to show that when you have an autoimmune condition that affects the brain, such as PANDAS, uh, or, or not even PANDAS, you can get uh, ANDAS, uh, OCD. There's immune system mechanisms that have been proven in schizophrenia, OCD, bipolar, depression. There's a whole wealth of information out there. The problem, and this is what I'm going to tell you about today, is that there's hardly anybody in healthcare that's actually treating these people like they've got an autoimmune condition. Well, now that there's a basis for the research, I hopefully some people will start assessing these people, these men and women, mainly women, to find out if they've got an autoimmune condition, but then treating them appropriately. And as you know me at all, you know that Helping someone with an autoimmune condition is, is more complex than just saying, well, uh, take vitamin D. Well, it's way more complex because you've got this whole cytokine dysregulation. People can have leaky gut. They can have uh, environmental toxicity. They can have infections. It's way more complicated than just saying, well, you've got an autoimmune condition. Uh, follow a gluten-free diet. Now, true, a gluten-free diet is one of the things that's very important, but it's not going to be enough by itself. So my main reason about... Uh, posting this today was to let you know that if you or someone in your family is struggling with an eating disorder, you might very well benefit from including an autoimmune perspective in their treatment. doesn't mean they shouldn't get uh, therapy or they shouldn't be taking uh, medication like antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication, but it could really serve them at a much higher level if we consider that they might have an autoimmune condition that's affecting their brain function, which is driving their disordered eating. So that means you need to find someone who understands what I just told you. And so you need to find someone that understands autoimmunity uh, from a functional perspective, someone that understands neurology from a functional perspective, and have that person evaluate uh, you or your child or whoever it is and look for those metabolic factors and neurologic factors and find out if there's an autoimmune condition. Because I'll tell you this, uh, the longer someone's been sick, uh, the more different things they've tried, it doesn't really matter what they've been diagnosed with, the more likely it is that they've got an autoimmune condition. And more research is coming out uh, by the week to show that the immune system is a big player in many different conditions. Everything from being just inflammatory and disturbing function to actually causing destruction of tissues and causing dysfunction. So this is just kind of a, a, a red flag alert to you if you know someone with an eating disorder that they need to be evaluated and evaluated appropriately for an autoimmune condition. Now the reason I say appropriately is if you go to like LabCorp request and you run like an ANA antibody or something like that, they might show up positive, they might not. In my opinion, the best test that you can do to find out if someone's got an autoimmune condition is from Cyrex Labs. It's their uh, test number five, and I don't have any financial interest with them, but I would find someone who's familiar with that test, that knows what it means, how to interpret the results, because it's a, a broad selection of different tissues that the person could be attacking. And it uses IgG and IgA antibodies combined, so it's a much more sensitive test. That's my opinion. That's what I've seen uh, time and time again. But again, hopefully you're going to work with a doctor that, that knows that and understands that. So in closing, um, I, I was really heartened actually to see this information because you know eating disorders, uh, there's a high degree of uh, recidivism, meaning you know the person ends up going back to their disordered eating. And uh, this may be something that can help that and may really help uh, someone you love 
uh, get out of that uh, trap of disordered eating.